for coming and coming on a Friday night. Before, before I start with the word of God, please, please don't look at me, but look at the Lord. I say this every time that I preach. He's more important than me. He's more beautiful than I. And if you guys left this service with my words and not his, I, I failed. I'm not here to, to do anything other than hopefully usher you into an encounter with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for your sweet presence. We thank you for touching your people. And we thank you for your word. Amen. Amen. You guys can go. Yeah. <laughs> Usually when I speak or I preach, I get very excited. But for this one, I don't, I don't feel like I'm going to get really excited. I just feel like it's going to be a talk. Um, I'm trying to get language to what I'm trying to say. In, in this season of my life, the Lord has called me to lay down some things. And I, I don't want to preach to you my season but the Word of God. In, in this season, the Lord had made me realize that what it says in 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 3, verse 5, that it said that they had a form of godliness but forsake the power of God. In context of, of that verse, it was talking about like people who will fall away from the Lord in the last days. But I realized that I, I personally, and maybe you guys can relate, but I personally was, was doing things that I thought that were of the Lord, like fasting and and praying long hours and doing all of these things, but the Lord told me it was a form of godliness because there was a lack of intimacy. Because I, I put my trust in prayer, I put my trust in, in fasting, I put my trust in, in sometimes the prophetic word, your gift. I put my trust in, in the things that I thought that were beautiful, but it wasn't him. It wasn't him. The Bible says that he's fairer than 10,000. That's what the Bible says. It doesn't say that your gift is fairer than 10,000. It doesn't say that the souls that you won for the kingdom of God are fairer than 10,000. It says that Jesus is our master, our savior, our Lord. And when I was going through first, Second Timothy 3, verse 5, I, I, I had to check my heart. and I felt like the Lord was like... <laughs> And this tenderness just, just asked me to surrender. And he made me start to think. I started to think, what does it actually look like for someone to fully lay down their lives to the Lord? What does it look like? What does it taste like? What does it smell like? I just started to wonder that what, was it, what would it be like to actually physically touch him and forsake my dirty rags? Because in all honesty, if you've been doing Christianity for a while, you pick up bad habits if you like it or not. You think sometimes what you're doing is godly, but it, 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 there's pride. There's pride. There's, there's that wicked thing we call pride. And, and in the Bible, it says that pride comes before destruction, and, and that's a gate before we can enter into the presence. You see, I was also reading what it said in Exodus because I was studying priesthood because the Bible says we're a royal priesthood. It says that, that, that God said, you shall be a nation of priests. And I started to read and I started to study and I got kind of confused. But I started to read how, how God commissioned Aaron and his sons. And there was a verse that struck me after they got commissioned, after they got they, they killed all the lambs. They, they, they spilled all the blood. It was, it was a crazy ceremony when I was reading it. But there was one thing that happened where his sons went into the presence. And they, they, they made an offering to the Lord that he did not require. And they died. And that made me think as a priest... I don't give him an offering by my own merit. I don't give him an offering by my own song. 
I don't give him an offering by my own scripture that I can remember and I can look cool. I don't give him an offering by my gift. I give him an offering by him leading me into his presence. You see, what made them priests wasn't the ephod. It wasn't the, 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 the jewels that were on there, on the ephod. It wasn't that. It was that God himself selected them to minister in his presence. We have been called to minister in his presence as priests. I guess I, before I even move on, I want that to sink in your heart. Like you're a priest of the Lord. You are a priest. You're not just a son, which is, that is the most important thing that you can ever be as a son and daughter to the Lord. But you remember that you are also a high priest. You're not a high priest. You're just a priest. He's the high priest. Sorry. But you are a priest to the Lord. And in this like, like in this in this like search of understanding what a priest was before I move on to my other point, like the Lord kept on telling me because I was like, what does a priest mean? And he just kept on bringing the word maintenance, maintenance, maintenance. And I was like, God, like, what the heck? What are they? What were they? What were they maintaining? And He made me realize they were maintaining His word. They were maintaining what He was saying from heaven into the ark because they went in there and did things that all of Israel couldn't do because they weren't commissioned to go in. But by the blood, by the blood of the Lamb, we are now commissioned to walk in and minister to the Lamb. Our commission to minister to the Lamb, where other people can't get that access to the Lord, like the unbelievers, or your friends who, who don't know the Lord, or those who don't understand His grace. You can actually walk in by the grace of God and find fruit in His heart and present them for they can eat. And when I was, and when I was praying today and studying the scripture, the, the, the Lord said, sow seed in my heart. Because we, want, we, we obviously want to bear fruit, but the soil is not just typical ground that we're sowing into. The seed is way more than, it's, it's way more important than just the soil. Because the soil is not just a platform. A soil is not just a YouTube channel. The soil is not just, just you going out and looking like the typical Christian guy. The soil is his heart, and the seed is the word. And when you put the word in his heart, it must grow. Amen? I hope this is all making sense. <laughs> I just want to turn to John 14. This is one of my favorite verses ever. And I might get a little excited, but this is my favorite verse. John 15 says, I am the true vine, and my father is the, is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he will take away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, and it may be bare, and so it may bear more fruit. You are already, you are already clean because of you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit on itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. This phrase, if you abide in me, it sticks out to me every time I read this verse. Every time I read from John 15, verse 1 to 4, there's like two things that come to mind. God never, he, he didn't simply suggest that you bear fruit. He commanded you to bear fruit. It, 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 wasn't, it, it, it wasn't just a, a metaphorical thing. It, it wasn't just a, okay, just because if you live the godly life, maybe I will bear fruit. He said, you must bear fruit. He says, if you truly say that you are a Christian, if you truly say that I'm a believer, I'm a born again, I'm a born again believer that I, I gave my life to the Lord. I, I was baptized and I was washed. I was cleansed and, I, and I, I commit myself onto him. You must look like Jesus. This is, it's, it's not, it's, it's not, a, it's, it's, how do I say this? I, I, I just, I feel, I can only speak for myself that I've been treating the presence of the Lord like it was common and not holy. 
And when you start treating the presence like it's holy, you bear fruit because, you know, sometimes we get caught up in, 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 in what the scriptures say that are, that, are, that, are, that are the fruit, like peace, joy, long-suffering, and all that stuff. And, and sometimes we, we go after those things, and those things are not bad. Don't get me wrong. You should be manifesting peace in your life. You should be manifesting the long-suffering of the Lord in your life. But when you start to pursue those things without him, they're dirty rags. And I learned that when I just keep my gaze on the Lord, fruit automatically manifests. Because the, the fruit of the Lord is, is not something I can pursue myself. The fruit of the Lord is the Lord itself. It's the nature of him. It's the nature of him. So when I spend time with the Lord, his nature comes upon me. So when I walk around a Costco, when I walk around a Walmart, when I walk around the Oshawa, the Oshawa Mall, now because I spent time with the Lord, the nature of the Lord must possess me and must bear witness of me. Because there's also this scripture that wrecks my mind because it, it, to me it has, it has two, two meanings. We use this famous verse, the, the word of the Lord will not return to him void. And that is true. When the word of the Lord comes to him, comes to you, the, uh, we know scripture says that the Lord is not a liar. But one day, like, my, my brain started to think about, you know, the judgment, the, the day of judgment, and how God would judge us. And it, I started to realize that, oh, if your word is actually in me, when I get judged, I, I can't return to you without presenting myself like you. Because he will actually just spit me out. My, one of my closest friends said something when we were in Moncton, and it's going to tie around to what I said if it doesn't make sense. He said that when, 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 Adam, when Adam and Eve sinned against the Lord, and the Lord said, Adam, where are you? He said it in, in one way because God couldn't find his own presence in him. He couldn't find his own image in him. And so he was like, where are you? Adam, where are you? Because he couldn't find his own image in Adam. And I started to think, it's, it's like the same thing with the word, that when I face the Lord on the day of judgment, when I face the Lord on the day of judgment, when that great day of judgment comes, and I get to see the beauty of the Lord. As the Bible says, that his, 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 his eyes are like fire, and his, his skin is like bronze, and his hair is like wool. As I get to see the beauty of the Lord on that day, I never want him to say, depart from me, because he never found his word in me. Never. When I read that scripture, I was so convicted because I said, if I, if I don't abide in him, if I don't lay my life down in him, the day of judgment will be so scary for me. Because I need him to find himself in me. Many of us have people that we look to. It's, it's amazing. I, I, have very, I have much heroes in the faith. Much heroes that I look to. But I, I just, there's something that burns in me. That, that if God can find their reward in them, why can't he find his reward in me? If God can use a man like Peter, why can't he use a man like me? If God can use someone like Jonah, why can't he use me? God, why can't you use me? And I started to realize that, that there's, there's the other scripture verse that, that says that the sons and daughters, the sons and daughters are actually waiting for the, for the, 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 all creation is waiting for the sons and daughters to be revealed. All creation is waiting for the sons and daughters to be revealed, but we know that you can only be a son. According to the scripture, it says that if you love me, you will lay your life down and you will follow my commands. We all agree on that, yeah? I started to realize that why creation is longing for sons and daughters to be revealed because God is coming to redeem creation. There will be a day where sin is no longer in the depths of creation, but God forbid creation doesn't get joy when you walk past it. That means it hasn't found the image of the Lord in you. And this city, our cities, 
We all live in Durham region. Majority of us live in Durham region in Peterborough. And the Lord is, is, is not stingy with his presence. He's not stingy with his presence. He's actually waiting for someone to be so hungry for the Lord and say, I'm going to close my door until you come in. I'm not going to leave until your presence consumes me. There has to be people in the land that are actually hungry for the Lord, hungry for the truth of the word, like hungry to say that this, this thing that I'm reading is all that I will ever have, and I will actually hold down the, like I will hold down the pipeline, and I won't change from it. This this, this compre- I, I, I don't want to feel like I'm condemning you. I, I'm not condemning you. But I'm saying this because this is what the word says. We can't live a compromised life in this day and we want and we want God to move. It doesn't happen. The Bible says that you should actually put off every weight, every single weight off you. The Bible also says that consider yourself dead and alive in the Lord. You see this 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 issue of 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 laying not laying down our lives real fully made me realize that. There's only one answer to it. We got bored of the Lord. When we are not laying down our lives to Jesus, we got bored of the Lord. He's not, he's not enough. That's the raw truth. When we get bored, when we're not laying down everything to the Lord, something inside of our bodies has got bored of the Lord. He's not satisfying that place anymore. A lot of us don't want to admit it, but that's the truth. If I don't want to pray, that means I'm not satisfied by his presence in prayer. And when I mean prayer, prayer is not just asking for things. It's when the prayer itself becomes Jesus. When you enter into the presence and and all you're asking for is his heart. And don't get me wrong, there's a time and season to ask for things because God says, ask and I'll give it to you. But, But our prayer should be on to the Lord. Our worship should be on to the Lord. And that's and it, 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 it represents what's going on in your heart. When your heart is in chaos, when your heart is not satisfied, when your mind is in bondage, not because the Lord wants you to be in bondage, but because it's not satisfied by the Holy Word and you're not standing by it. I can talk about my generation. Many of us are in bondage to mental health. We're in, and we're in bondage to, to depression and anxiety and, and all these things. And, and we pray. And we ask the Lord to take it away. And then when a month goes by, he doesn't take it away. We get, we get hardened to the Lord and our hearts are no longer tender. When we're praying for something to the Lord and, and, and he doesn't show up in the time that you want, our hearts get, get, get angry to the Lord. But I started to realize that hell or high water, I'm standing on the word of God. There was a season in my life where I was depressed for two years. Every single day of my, and this was two years ago. It wasn't before I was saved. This was while I was a believer. Every day, the devil came to me and told me to kill myself. Every single day. It was like when I went into the presence, it was like a living hell. Because he was confusing my mind. He, he made me think that God wasn't talking to me. He made me feel and, and think that I wasn't saved. Every single day, I would enter the presence and just get tormented. Tormented and tormented and tormented. And I, I asked the Lord to free me. And he said, son, I freed you. I'm like, what are you talking about you freed me? He said, my word is enough. For two years while getting tormented, I had to decide that if this demon keeps on coming, I'm going to believe truth more than my own thoughts. That's what I had to, that's what, that's what I had to understand. I had to take a scripture when it says that, when it, when it says that, be anxious for nothing. I beat my body into submission until I yielded to it. This is what it means to lay yourself down to the Lord. It's when you take his word as a plumb line and you put it in the ground of his heart and you said, Lord, you said this, so I'm not moving. We can't live double mind lives. The Bible in the book of James says that you can ask the Lord for wisdom and all these things, but if you're double minded, it'll be like you, you won't receive anything from him. And double-mindedness is not just, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm being cautious and I'm doubting. Double-mindedness in, in the most simple truth is lack of faith in the Lord. That's, that's, the con- that's like the confliction of your heart. Is that you don't have faith in the word of God when the, when the assignment of the enemy is making you double-minded. It's the, that's, what, that's what's going on. 
So one of my pleads tonight, one of my, one of my pleads, if you get nothing from what I'm saying and only this, lay your whole life to the Lord. When you got saved, you actually made a transaction. Remember, you made a vow on to the Lord. You made a vow. You said, my life for your life. And like, just, just think about that, my life for your life. So if you've given your life to the Lord, what right do you have over your body? This is why scripture says that consider your, 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 your being a holy temple of the Lord. This is why it says that because there was a transaction that happened. There was a literal transaction. Your, your, your mind, body, and soul, he's now reigning in there. Is this, is this all making sense? Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Because, you know, sometimes, like, I, like I, I get really excited by these things, and I'll be in the mirror, like, jumping up and down. I'm like, yeah, this makes sense. And I talk to someone else, like, yeah, brother, what are you talking about? And so I was like, dang. But, <laughs> but in, like, all seriousness, if you don't, I'm trying to say this softly. <laughs> If you don't lay yourself down to the Lord, in all honesty and truth, why do you think when you pray the word of God will work? I, like, and I'm not saying you shouldn't pray the word of God. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that if you live a double-minded life, if you live a lukewarm life, if you live a life that is not submitted to the Lord and you're actually just doing what you want, when you pray to the Lamb, why would he receive your prayers? The first thing that he's going to do is make sure you're actually saved before you can get that communication with asking him for blessings. You know, many of us want to be blessed, and that's okay. But the real blessing is knowing the Lamb. So why would he answer your prayers? That's what happened to Israel. He, he souped up his glory for years because they went to pagan gods. He stopped. He shut down everything and said, until you repent, I'm not giving you all. I'm not giving you what I, what I promise. And I, I sometimes I, I feel like for, for Christians, we, 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 we come into this. I'm trying to like, I'm trying to use the right word so I don't, I don't, I, yeah. Like we, we come into this place in, in Christianity sometimes that it's like we're spoiled brats. We feel like God must move our way. We feel like, oh, I don't have to live an obedient life to the Lord, but he'll still bless me. Why? Why? Why would he do so? The Bible is so clear when it comes to prayer. We, if he says, or yeah, it's so clear when it comes to prayer and asking the Lord. It says, pray if when you pray in my name, I will give you everything that you ask. And then later on in the verse it says, and so the Father may be glorified. So when you're asking to the Lord, it's not for your own sake. It's for the Lord to be glorified. So if your life is not submitted to the Lord, and he's given you these things, how would he give you these things if he's not being glorified? For the glory is not going to the Lord, it's going to yourself. And then it goes back to the, the same point I made. You're not satisfied in his presence. Amen. And we have to get out this box that that the presence is the presence is only for some people. God is not a respecter of man. This is what the scripture teaches. He wants to know you. He wants to know you. There's one thing that I I, I hope you guys also take as the wonder from the Lord. For some of my friends, they know me as a really excited guy. I get very excited when it comes to the Lord. But it's not because I just read text. It's not because I just read pen and, pen and paper. It's because I, I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing it. That when I walk into my room, I meet him. 
and I know that he's there. When I go into a church service, I'm not waiting for a song to be good. I'm remembering that the Lord is good. I'm not waiting for someone to come and pray for me and I roll on the floor and I'm blasted and God knows you guys know I love that stuff. I love getting blasted. But the real truth is I don't care if I get blasted with no fruit. It's, it means nothing. If I roll on the floor for 72 days when I do not love the Lord, it means nothing. If I speak in tongues every single day in my closet but my life is not laid down to the Lord, it means nothing. If I prophesy a thousand words and I can hear the, the voices of angels and I can interpret it to you without love, it means nada. So I don't go into my closet, into the presence to find something that I, that I, I, I wish that can magically come. It's, it's, I go into the presence because it's real. And tonight, God wants to make himself real to you guys. Like, like not just a, a manifestation and we, we lay hands on you guys and you guys fall. No, I'm, I'm talking about circumcision in heart. You see, this is why they, they called Abraham a man of faith. Yo, the story is wild. He was old in age. And the Lord said, yo, get everyone in your household. Get a little flint and psh, that's crazy. That's no, that's actually like, like think about it. That's actually crazy. Like you have to be, it's either this God that called him from one, a pagan land. He was a, he, he, he worshiped other gods and God encountered him. And the Lord said, hey, I have another land for you. Come. And he didn't even get to see the fullness of his promise. But why was he so in, why was he so crazy about it? Like, what did he see that made him be moved to get a flint? And not just himself, but everyone in the house of Israel. What moved him? What moved him? What, 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 moved, what moved Paul to, to actually end up sacrificing his life? Lily being whipped, beaten, spat on, the whole nine. What moved him? Do you think it was just... Just reading pen and paper? If you read this without the Spirit, you can't understand. The Spirit moved him. The Spirit moved him. This is why when he started to quote Scripture, it wasn't dead. It was alive because the Spirit inside of him transformed him. Tonight, the Lord wants to make you, make you understand that his Spirit, the same Spirit that rose Christ from the grave, is in you. It's in you. You need it. It's your lifeline. But if you treat it unholy, the Bible says, it, it says, do not, do not strife the Holy Spirit. Like, do not. Don't do it. But how? He, he, he wants to live in you. He wants to speak to you. He wants to wake you up in the midday and, and, and to start singing to him. He wants to commune with you. It's weird if God doesn't talk to you. That's like the honest truth. It's because like, he's a father. Imagine you parents in here not talking to your kids. That's weird. Seeing them every day and you're just mute. You're just mute. They look at you, they say hi, but you're just like, it's weird. God wants to speak to you. He wants to move something in your heart. He wants you to, to lay down other lovers. Before I move on to my next point, it's this, this story came back in my mind about the loveless church. That church, was, that, that whole scene in Revelation rocked me because that church was doing way more things than a typical Christian. Sniffing out, false pro, sniffing out false doctrines, not letting any things that were not of the Spirit into their church. They were on paper, they were doing everything right. But the Spirit of the Lord rebuked them and said, if you do not return back to your first love, I will snatch the, lap, the, the, the lamp from you. And I said, what the heck? I looked at the scripture. I said, Lord, I'm doing all of this. You know, I'm like, I'm trying to be zealous against false doctrine. I'm doing all of this. And I'm like, but where's the love? It goes back to 2 Timothy 3, 5, a form of godliness, but with no power. And I'm not talking about like a denomination. Now I'm talking about sons and daughters. A denomination doesn't hold power. I don't care if you're a Baptist, I don't care if you are a Pentecostal, I don't care if you, whatever you, you claim to be, if you believe in Jesus Christ, the one who rose from the grave, you must carry power. You actually must bear fruit. Is that making sense? 
Okay. Praise God. <laughs> yeah. I think my last, the last thing that I sense, and David and Cassie, you can come up. The, the last thing that I sensed was some of some people are are just getting attacked by the spirit of unworthiness. So they don't enter into the presence because they feel like they're unworthy. They they don't they don't commune with the Lord because they think they're unworthy. The first thing that I have to say that it's not about you. You're actually never worthy. It's just a fact. Like you you couldn't do anything. You your your riches is like dirty rags to the Lord. But it's because he made you worthy you can now go into the presence. It's because he made you worthy you can now commune with the Lord. It's because he made you worthy you can now pray and you can actually love the Lord. The Bible says that that without the Holy Spirit you can't even confess that he is the Lord. This is what scripture says. So when when the Spirit wants to satisfy you, and lies come into your mind and say that you're not worthy of the Lord. Who are you? You're just you're just a sinner. You're just a you're just you're just a mistake. You're just something that the Lord is taking pity on you. No, God's not taking pity on you. He's in love with you. Madly in love with you. God's not raising a pity church. He's not raising a church that's defeated. The Bible says that he's coming back for a spotless and blameless bride. He's not coming for a church that says, oh, man, Monday got me. Tuesday got me. Oh, maybe I was good on Wednesday, but oh, shoot, Thursday. No, no, what is that? What is that? It says that, that we, we, we overcome by the what? The blood. And the word of his testimony, I don't care what situation it is, the testimony of Jesus is way more powerful than whatever you're going through. And the one, the last thing before we pray for anyone who wants prayer, I just want to remind you guys that you're actually sons and daughters. I can't take it. <laughs> That like, especially for, I'm gonna speak more to like my generation. The Lord is is not just calling you to do great exploits. He's not just calling us to a simple outreach night. He's not just calling us to to go on stages and and preach or travel the world. He's calling you to Himself. Mm -hmm. The biggest mantle that you would ever get. It's not being a pastor. It's not being an apostle or a prophet. It's not being an evangelist. The biggest mantle that you would ever receive is being a son and daughter. That is the biggest inheritance that you would ever receive. And if you're in this place and you don't feel like you're worthy, let me remind you, the cross made you worthy. That thing, that, 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 that thing we put on every church made you worthy. And if that's you, I... I I want to pray for you so you can receive the love of God. If you don't feel like you're a son or a daughter, I want to pray for you so you may receive that mantle because your calling is to love the Lord and everything from that love now becomes your assignment. Mm -hmm. That's all this preacher has. But if that's you, if that's you in all boldness, if you don't feel loved, if you don't know you're a son or a daughter, if you're dealing with any lies in your heart, put up your hand or just come to the front and we will pray for you. That's it. That's it. 